concerns with our past relationships. Now, it's been a while since you've dated anyone, and we need to reconcile why you have such apprehension about starting a new relationship. I understand, Dr. Money, and I don't know why I'm so afraid to date. Well, tell me about your last relationship. It was uh, how long ago? Two years. <laughs> so it's been two years since you've been with a man. Oh, were you just talking about men? <laughs> so make that five years. Uh, I'm sorry, Jane. I didn't realize. Look, it only happened once. We were both drunk and lonely. I shouldn't have even counted it. Okay, fine. Um, then let's confine this session to your relationship with just men, shall we? Okay, sounds great. <laughs> just men. Okay, so um, five years ago you went out with a man named... Lloyd. Floyd. Okay. Well, tell me about Floyd. Well, he was very exciting and mysterious. Well, what happened? Did he mistreat you and ignore you? Not at all, Doctor. He was the most attentive, wonderful, passionate man I ever met. You caught him cheating on you then? Floyd never. He was crazy about me. The times I spent with him were some of the best memories of my life. Then I don't see what the problem was. That's just it, Doctor. I had wonderful times when I was with him. But after a while, I was hardly ever with him. Well, why not? I guess because he mainly worked nights and I worked days. Well, lots of couples work opposite shifts and still manage to maintain a healthy relationship. In fact, because they have limited time for each other, it sometimes makes their time to be more special. I know, that's how it was with us. Well, what business was he in? Um, banking? <laughs> oh, well, come on, Jane. You're an intelligent woman. You know that bankers work nine to five. You were dating a banker who worked nights. What really happened? All right. The reason that he had to work nights is he was robbing the banks. <laughs> mouth about it. I asked him how his night went and he'd just say, profitable. <laughs> well, what happened to him? That's the funny part, Doctor. If I would have stayed with him, it would have been the perfect relationship. I would know where my boyfriend was all the time. <laughs> He's in jail, isn't he? Four to eight and eleven more. But, with good behavior, he'll be out in six months. Do you think I should take it up with them again? <laughs> You're not serious, are you? <laughs> Why not? He doesn't drink, smoke, or do drugs. He's in great shape and terrific in the sack. <laughs> and I imagine he was a good provider. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Still, Jane, I think it's best that you lay that relationship to rest and try to move on now. I guess you're all right, Doctor. Okay, well, time's up, Jane. I'll see you tonight in group. All right, I'll see you tonight, Doctor. Are we role-playing again tonight? Uh, I don't think Mr. Rumson will be returning. <laughs> and unless I can find a replacement for him. I mean, but where would I find someone on such short notice? I just... <laughs> Hello, Dr. Rumson. Oh, uh, hi, boss. I'm sorry you're with someone. I'll come back later. Oh, no, that's okay. Jane was just leaving. Do you think he can take a punch? Goodbye, Jane. <laughs> Maybe a movie, then back to my place. 
Well, I really think I could use your services tonight. <laughs> Cecilia, I hardly know you. Ah, oh, what the hell? What time tonight? Should I bring the wine? It's 7.30 and skip the wine. And Bob. Yes, Cecilia. I paid $60 an hour. <laughs> You're going to pay me? <laughs> I don't know if I like that idea. <laughs> but it will make you feel better. Pay attention, Bob. I'm paying you to help with the women in my group. Group? How many are in it? <laughs> Four. Oh, I don't know. Two should see my women. <laughs> but maybe if I go home and take a nap for an hour, maybe drink a red bull. Bob, you don't understand. This is therapy. Hey, call whatever the hell you want. <laughs> Eat a bigger couch. <laughs> Not um, sexual therapy, just plain old therapy, group therapy. Now are you game? You'd really be helping me out. Cecilia, if I'm helping you out in any way, I'd be happy to do it. Excellent. I'll see you tonight then. Tonight it is. <laughs> Cecilia. I can't believe you tricked that man into helping you with your group. Mother, have you been eavesdropping on my private conversations? Just doing laundry. Then how are you privy to my conversation? The vent in the corner of your office leads right into the laundry room. Well, isn't that a nice revelation? But for your information, I did not trick Bob into helping. He was happy to do it. And you know why, don't you? Probably for the money, like all the rest. Nonsense. He's attracted to you. That's absurd. It's true. How would you know? A mother's intuition. <laughs> Just what did you and Bob talk about the other day, Mother? Oh, nothing personal. Just a cat. Day ain't saying that you find that sherry I was looking for the other day. <laughs> Stop trying to change the subject, Mother. Now, what happened with you and Bob? mentioned what a bum your father was, but that's all! Mom, you have no right to discuss family matters with a stranger. Why not? You do it all the time. <laughs> that is different, and you know it. How? Because. Because I get paid to do it, that's how. Now, I am very busy. All right, I'm going. And one more thing, Mother. What's that? I want you to promise to not listen in on any more of my private conversations. Starting when? Starting now, Mother! Oh, all right. It's not like I'm going to hear a better story than that woman who was dating the bank robber anyway. <laughs> mother! But I want you to make me a promise, too. What's that, Mother? Since you're not going to call that dentist, why don't you give Bob a chance? He seems like a decent guy. I'll give it some thought, Mother. Coming from you, that's practically a concession. I have some errands to run before this evening's session. Well, what about dinner? I'll grab something out. Oh, well, do you mind if I look for that sherry while you're out? Uh, sure. But don't go in my desk. I don't want my privacy invaded again. And I will ask that you stop doing laundry during business hours. <laughs> when would you like me to do it? Midnight? <laughs> Tell me, why doesn't the noise from the washing machine cover up my conversations? Oh, it does. But when I'm first in there loading the machine and I hear something juicy, I just load a little slower. <laughs> well, I'm putting you on your honor to load a little faster. I will see you later. Oh, do you mind if we skip breakfast tomorrow? I might not be home. Really? Where will you be? At a date. <laughs> a date? With whom? With that fellow from the cooking class. I'm bringing over a special dessert I'm preparing, and then we're going out to dinner and a show, and then if I read things right, carpe diem. <laughs> <laughs> really, Mother? On a first date? I thought you said you were too old. When you get to be my age, you can now wait around for the debutante ball to get in. Really, Mother? Mm -hmm. That's an awful lot of game playing going on for a first date. That's true. But 
you know, when Mother. the mood <laughs> strikes you. <laughs> Bingo. 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 I have to go, Mother, but we will talk more about Bingo before your big date tonight. I'll see you later. So I'd like to call my answer machine and talk to you. Is that right? 
We're here. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Madeline. Hi, Jane. I would like you to meet uh, Bob Crowley. He's going to be assisting us in group tonight. I hope he's tougher than the last one. <laughs> what does she mean? Uh, never mind, Bob. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm here. Uh, hi, Allison. I would like you to meet our new assistant, um, Robert Crowley. What? Robert? My name is Bob! <laughs> You're right, honey. How <laughs> oh, insensitive of 
me. As a matter of fact, there was a special on public television about how to improve your relationship with your spouse that I was dying to watch with you. I taped it while you were sleeping because I didn't want to disturb you. But I'd love it if we could watch it together right now. You would? <laughs> Seriously, did you? You know what the pressure we're under. The boys on the force are always playing practical jokes on each other. We planted that same note on Clancy last week. Don't you worry your pretty little head about a thing. You know you're the only perpetrator I want to have handcuffed to me. Don't you, sugar? Oh, Bob. <laughs> to be role-playing, let's think of something. How about we're all couples double dating at a drive-in movie? Loretta, you can be Tony's date, <laughs> and I'll be Bob's date. But what about us? Oh, Jane, you can be Madeline's date. How did she find out? <laughs> Singles. 
I think so. <laughs> Cecilia, would you like to come help me blowtorch the creme brulee? <laughs> I'll get my jacket. <laughs>
cross my heart. Well, ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a dancer. I knew it. I knew you liked to dance. You cut a mean rug at that luau. How'd you learn how to dance so good? Well, when I was a little girl and my daddy would come home from an early gig, he would always take my hands and put my feet on his feet. Oh, and we would dance and dance. Ever since then, I always wanted to be a dancer. Well, Cecilia, if you always wanted to be a dancer, then why didn't you become one? I wasn't good enough. <laughs> no, I get it. A power's that beat, right? Uh, no, I just wasn't good enough. Oh. Well, even if you didn't open it yet, I'm glad you liked that I brought you a surprise. You know what, Bobby? I've got a surprise for you, too. Hello, <laughs> what is it? stuck inside a base drum. <laughs> Did anything, I mean, did we... <laughs> Get horizontal? Well, 